Hello. So I want to talk about the Cantor-Schroeder-Bernstein theorem today, which is an interesting theorem in set theory. And I want to look at an example that provides an interesting perspective on the proof of the theorem. So let's get started. So here's a statement of the Cantor-Schroeder-Bernstein theorem. Let A and B be sets. If there exist injections F from A to B and G from B to A, then there exists a bijection H from A to B. So I'm assuming you have a basic understanding of set theory and you know what a function is and what an injection and what a bijection is. Another way to state this result in terms of cardinality is that if the cardinality of A is less than or equal to the cardinality of B and the cardinality of B is less than or equal to the cardinality of A, then the cardinalities of A and B are equal. So this result is extremely useful in set theory when you're trying to prove that two sets have the same size because it allows you to do so by establishing an injection each way as opposed to explicitly constructing a bijection between the two sets. And that's often much easier. So before diving into the proof, I want to review an example uh, that helps provide insight on the proof. So this example is from the mathematician David Hilbert. It's a thought experiment that he came up with to illustrate some of the counterintuitive or surprising properties of infinite sets. So Hilbert's hotel is a hotel that has infinitely many rooms numbered one, two, three, and so on. In other words, these rooms are numbered by the positive integers. And we assume that each room is occupied by exactly one guest. So the question is, what happens if a new guest shows up at the hotel and wants a room? Can we accommodate the guest in the same way? Meaning, can we accommodate the new guest in such a way that all of the guests, old and new, are occupying exactly one room? So surprisingly, the answer is yes, we can. And here's how we do it. To accommodate the new guest, we move the guest that's currently in room N to room N plus 1. And we do that simultaneously for all guests. So the guest currently in room 1 goes to room 2. The guest currently in room 2 goes to room 3, and so on. And then, after that's done, we put the new guest in the recently vacated room number one. Once that's done, we've accommodated all of the guests, both old and new. So this is somewhat surprising and a little counterintuitive when you first see it, but we can actually do much more than this. Suppose that countably infinitely many new guests arrive and want rooms. Can we accommodate all of these new guests? Again, surprisingly, the answer is yes. The way we do it in this case is we move the guest that's currently in room N to room 2N and then put all of the new guests in rooms 2N minus 1. So what this means is we're taking the guests currently in room 1, moving them to room 2, the guests currently in room 2, moving them to room 4, and so on. In other words, moving all of the existing guests into the even-numbered rooms and then putting the new guests into the recently vacated odd-numbered rooms. So the new guest number one goes into room one, new guest number two goes into room three, and so on. So you can keep iterating this and you can prove that you can actually accommodate even an infinite set of infinitely many new guests. Uh, excuse me, infinitely many sets of infinitely many new guests, and you can keep, uh, keep on going. But we don't need to go that far. Uh, even these examples give us enough of an idea to prove the Cantor-Schroeder-Bernstein theorem. So let's take a look at that. So in order to draw the connection between the Hilbert's Hotel example and the Cantor-Schroeder-Bernstein theorem, I'm going to draw the two sets A and B in the theorem as lines. So the points in the set in the sets are the, the points on the lines. And I'm going to draw an arrow indicating the mapping G from B into A. So we're going to envision that the points in A are guests and the points in B are rooms in a hotel. And we're going to envision that G is telling us the guest that's currently occupying a given room. So we see that all of the rooms in B are mapped into this part of A on the right. And this part of A on the left is not mapped into. So that means that these are guests that don't currently have rooms. Recall that what we're trying to do is construct a bijection from A to B. So essentially what we're trying to do is accommodate all of the guests, both the guests that currently have rooms and the ones that don't currently have rooms, and find them all rooms. We need that each guest is mapped to a distinct room. 
So we're never having two guests pair up in the same room. And we need that all of the rooms are occupied when we're done. So the way we're going to do this is to zero our focus in on this set A0 or A0 defined to be the set of all points in A that are not in the image of B under G. So these are the guests that don't currently have rooms. And we're going to try to find these guests' rooms. And the way we're going to do that is using F. So we can use F to indicate the rooms to which we would like to map these guests. Of course, we can't just shove them in those rooms because we already have guests occupying those rooms. And we can see which guests those are by applying G to that image set of A0 under F. So when we apply G, we see this set A1, which is defined to be G of F of A0. We see that this set A1 is the set of guests currently occupying the rooms where we would like to put the people in A0. So in order to accommodate the guests in A0, we're going to shift or displace the guests in A1 down to new rooms using F. So this is very similar to the Hilbert's Hotel example where we were moving a guest down by one room, except here we are moving sets of guests, possibly infinitely many guests, using F. And we keep repeating this infinitely many times. So A0 gets mapped by F, that displaces A1, which will then displace another set of guests, and so on, infinitely many times. So let's make this formal. We let A0 be A minus G of B, that is the set of points in A not in the image of B under G. We let AN plus 1 be G of F of AN. In other words, to get AN plus 1 from AN, you apply F, and then you apply G to the result, just like we did in the diagram to get from A0 to A1. Finally, we let A infinity be the union of all of the ANs. So this is all of the guests that are new, as well as the guests who are displaced in this process. Once we have those sets defined, we can define our mapping. So we define h from a to b by h of x is f of x, if x is in a infinity, and g inverse of x otherwise. So what this means in terms of the hotel is that if x is in a infinity, in other words, if x is either a new guest or a guest that's being displaced, we're going to find this guest a new room using f. If x is not in a infinity, that means that the guest is not being displaced in this process, and so we're just going to leave them alone. Recall that g tells us the guest originally occupying a room, so g inverse is just giving us the room occupied by that guest. So g inverse of x just leaves that guest in their place. So once we've defined h, now all that's left to do is verify that h is a bijection, and this is actually fairly straightforward to do. So for injectivity, we need to show that h of x equaling h of y implies that x is equal to y. So we have to consider cases. If x and y are both in a infinity, then we can just appeal to the injectivity of f, because when x and y are in a infinity, h is just defined in terms of f. If x and y are both not in a infinity, then we can appeal to the injectivity of g, because the injectivity of g implies the injectivity of g inverse, and that's how h is defined for such x and y. The only case that we need to think about a little bit more is the case where one of the points, say x, is in a infinity, and the other point, y, is not in a infinity. So let's see what this means. In this case, x is in a n for some n. So now, by definition of h, if h of x is equal to h of y, that means that f of x is equal to g inverse of y. Again, that's just from the definition of h applied to x and y. But if that's the case, then we can apply g to both sides of that equation to yield that y is equal to g of f of x. And g of f of x is in g of f of the set a n, since x is in a n. But that set is just a n plus 1, by definition. So this tells us that y is in a n plus 1, 
But that's a contradiction because we're assuming that y is not in a infinity and hence it's not in any of the a n. So similarly, this reasoning covers the case where y is in a infinity but x is not in a infinity. So we see that h is in fact injective, which is what we wanted. In, in terms of the hotel, what this is telling us is that this mapping never sends two guests to the same room. Each guest is mapped to a distinct room. For surjectivity, we need to show that for each z and b, there's an x in a with h of x equal to z. In other words, under this mapping, each room has a guest. So let's start with such a z and consider x equal to g of z. So in other words, we're just going to apply g to z, and we're going to look at this x, which is the original guest that was occupying that room. So if x is not in a infinity, then it's easy. That means that the guest wasn't displaced through this process, and so when we apply h, we just get g inverse of x, by definition, which is just z, because x is equal to g of z. So we get z back. If x is in a infinity, things are a little more complicated. So let's see what this means. In this case, we know that x is in a n for some n, by definition of a infinity. The key insight is that n must be greater than 0, since x is in the image of b under g. If you recall, a0 or a0 was defined to be the set of points in a not in the image of g, but here we're dealing with a point that's known to be in the image of g, so it can't be in a0. That means n is greater than 0. So that means x is in g of f of a n minus 1, by definition of a n. In other words, x is equal to g of f of x prime for some x prime in a n minus 1. So let's see what that means. That means that z, which is just g inverse of x, is just f of x prime. And that follows by applying g inverse to both sides of the relation x equals g of f of x prime. But f of x prime is just h of x prime because x prime is in a n minus 1 and hence is in a infinity. And that's how h is defined for points of a infinity. So what we have here is that z is in the image of h. In the language of the hotel, this is telling us that if x is in a infinity, in other words, if x is a guest that was displaced in the process, then we know that we're getting a new guest, or rather a different guest, occupying this room after the original guest is displaced. So this shows us that h is surjective, and since we know it's injective, that means it's bijective as claimed. So we have constructed the desired bijection between a and b. So the proof that I gave here of this result is very similar to the proof in Herb Edgerton's book, The Elements of Set Theory. He doesn't mention the Hilbert's Hotel connection, but I think that provides an interesting perspective on the proof. Nevertheless, if you look at his book, you'll see that the proof that he gives is essentially the same one that I gave. I highly recommend that you pick up this book and take a look. There's a number of different ways to prove the cantor schroeder bernstein theorem, but I, pr I think, in my opinion, this way of looking at the proof is particularly instructive and interesting. I also recommend that you take a look at the Hilbert's Hotel example on the internet um, and see some of the other interesting implications from that example. Thanks for watching.